All right, I think everybody has signed on. So good evening, everyone, and welcome. It's a beautiful day in Edmonton. If you're calling, if you're joining us from Edmonton, we still have sun out, so spring is definitely coming. And I want to welcome you all to our Thursday night travel talk. Tonight we will be featuring Azamara. And it is so nice to see everybody's faces. For those of you who have not been on a Zoom call before, everybody is muted so that we can prevent any background noise. There is a chat box for you to enter your questions and we will have questions at the end of the meeting. And you have the option of turning your camera on or off. Um, sometimes we don't like to have our cameras on. Maybe we're sitting in our pajamas, but we encourage you to put your, your pajamas on. We have spent the last year not seeing anybody and socializing, so we'd love to see your very happy faces. So my name is Lisa Amflick. I'm one of the consultants at Expedia Cruises, and tonight's travel talk is being hosted by the six Edmonton Expedia Cruises and vicinity stores. We started this weekly travel talk back after the pandemic began because we realized that we need to have something. I was tired of Netflix and we decided that we were going to put on these weekly talks to inspire you, to motivate you, to educate you. Those of you who are on the call absolutely probably love to travel as much as I do. So hopefully, I thank you for joining us tonight and hopefully you can continue to join us in our series. So we have passed one year of no travel. And those of you who are on the call love to travel. We're missing it. Travel fulfills us. That's why we do it. I think this is the first time in my life that my suitcase has actually collected dust. I absolutely can't wait to get back to travel. And the picture of travel is getting more and more optimistic. Many of you on the call either have had your vaccine, first shot vaccine, or at least know when you can get it. I got my first shot last week and I have to tell you, I am so excited because to me, that is one step closer to travel. So our Expedia offices are open and here for you. Due to COVID restrictions, we ask that you either call us or email us to make an appointment. We can meet with you on Zoom, by phone or communicate by email. And we are here to help you plan your next vacations. Uh, right now, people are not traveling, but we are seeing optimism and huge bookings for 2022 and even into 2023. And all our consultants are here to help you navigate the, uh, the differences in travel. Things will look a little bit different. There's a little bit of requirements, um, some health and safety procedures that we have to go through. So we're going to be giving you that information. Uh, before we start with our special guest, I want you to mark your calendar for next Thursday at 1 p.m. We will be having Captain Philippe, who is a captain of Azamara, who is going to be joining us from the ship in Athens. And if you check into the chat box right now, you will see the registration link is there. So you can register for that event. So now I would like to introduce you to our special guest. We have partnered with our preferred suppliers who are wonderful, wonderful cruise line and tour operators who can give us wonderful information on what's happening in the world. And we have with us tonight, Eva Horn, Business Development Manager of Azamara, who's joining us from her home in Squamish. So welcome, Eva. Well, thanks, Lisa, for the great invite. Um, and just, you know, I just mirror everything you say. I cannot wait to get back to cruising. I am so excited. I look back on my Facebook feeds where I was two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, and boy, does it ever get me excited to sail the seven seas again. So I'm just going to quickly share my screen now. Let me know when you can see it. And it's the right one, hopefully. Azamara truly is all about that small ship destination immersion. And what we love about what we do is we really dive deep into each port of call that we visit all around the world. And we truly are a global company. We visit all seven continents. So it's really unique when we get an opportunity to go into ports of call all around the world and really spend lots of time there. You know, why Azamara? What I said before, it's about connecting people to people and people with cultures and people with themselves. That's so important because you look at things differently when you have that time to interact with the local culture and the local people. 
And how do we do that? We are a cruise line that's all about immersive itineraries and cultures by staying longer in port. Now, a vast majority of all of our time in port, we spend after 8 p.m. So that's a longer or late night stay for us. We also do a lot of overnights. And quite often we'll actually do double overnights in some of the places like St. Petersburg or Seville or in places like Bangkok or even in the Bordeaux region. And that makes a really big difference when you have this gorgeous floating boutique hotel at sea and it's there like your private yacht. What that allows us to do is dive in deep and you also have the opportunity to do things like night touring. Now, of course, with our current environment under the COVID restrictions, our three beautiful sister ships, soon to be four, are nicely, safely tucked away all together in Glasgow, Scotland. The nice thing about having small ships like ours is we can await the CDC protocols to be lifted, and then we'll be able to deploy our ships very quickly. We are set to sail in the spring, they will go during the first week in June and they will deploy out into the Mediterranean. One will go to Greece, one will go to the Black Sea and the other one will head to Northern Europe. We also have a beautiful four ship joining our fleet and she will start to sail with us in early 2022. So until then, there's our ships. We're fully uh, staffed with a complete crew and captains and they are waiting very patiently in Glasgow. Now, one of the things that we do have, and we were formerly part of the Royal Caribbean family, actually until just last week, now we are a standalone brand, which is really great for us because we're a company that's really growing and people love that beautiful small ship experience. So this gives us an opportunity to really flourish and grow and be the best Osmara we can be. But we still have what's called Cruise with Confidence. So still tucked under the Royal Caribbean umbrella with this, and it's fantastic because it gives you that flexibility. If you were just vaccinated and you're a little unsure if it's you're ready to go and you want to have that flexibility, you want to talk to the team members on the screen there that are hosting us tonight, and they will explain everything with Cruise with Confidence, but it's fantastic. What it guarantees is the best price, the best offer, and then also gives you a future cruise credit if we do happen to cancel again. And right now, this goes right up until the end of May. Now, who is our traveler? Who comes on an Ozamara ship? It is a company that's not really well known to some, but a very, very loyal brand to many, many others. The people that like to travel with Ozamara is everyone. You really just have to be curious about traveling, have that explorer type and adventurer type of mindset, and really want to dive deep into each destination, but not to feel rushed and not to have structure. What we always like to say at Ozamara, we're almost like a cruise line that's meant for non-cruisers. It's more like having your own private yacht or your own private boutique hotel at sea. So for those of you who love to travel, but like that flexibility and freedom of your own to be able to do things by yourself in port, not feeling rushed to get back, but also interacting with like-minded individuals on board, Ozamara might be a very, very good choice for you if you haven't sailed with us. Those of you who have know that we have an incredible brand loyalty and people sail with us time and time again. Now with Ozamara, you heard me say that we sail all to all seven continents from Iceland to Antarctica and everything in between. We have different types of voyages as well. We have themed voyages, which I'll go over in just a moment. We have segment voyages. So long sort of voyages that are paired in segments back to back to back. So you can explore one large geographical area, something like South America, including Antarctica or all of Northern Europe. Or you can go from Southeast Asia all the way down to South Africa. So those are our larger segments. But by far the most popular trips that we do is something called our country intensives. These are voyages that are not just brush stroke into one area, they dive deep into individual countries. And you can see some on my screen here from France to Scotland to Ireland to Spain to Italy to Croatia, Iceland, South Africa, Turkey, Greece, and so many more. And these by far are very, very popular voyages. Our clients love these. 
And even though they've done perhaps Iceland once or they've done Japan, they may, maybe not necessarily have done it with Azamara. And again, it's a very different experience when you see something on land versus something by water. I'll give you an example, Scotland is a, is a typical destination that's typically done by land. But then when you see it by sea, it's a very different experience altogether. So the very first one I'm gonna show you is one of my very favorite trips. This is our eight night Spain intensive. And you'll see on my screen here, a beautiful shot of Seville. And you'll see a map, and then you'll see some sort of red squiggles on the right hand side. And the reason I show you this is because the lower circle right there with the red and Cadiz, that's where most conventional ships will have to dock. A lot of them will do the Barcelona to Spain loop through, uh, you know, the Rock of Gibraltar and go all the way up, but they don't necessarily get a chance to go into Seville. Only smaller ships like Othmar are able to do this because we sail all the way up the Guadalajara River. That is some 60 miles. Most of the other ships dock where my lower red circle is, and that's a two and three hour coach ride in and out of Seville. We go all the way up and spend two full days and two full nights in the heart of this incredible city. So to give you an idea, this is what it looks like when our ship is going through the locks, getting all the way up the river and sailing right into Seville. Now Seville offers so much. And when you have the ship right there, literally in your backyard, you're able to spend time ashore. You can um, enjoy some of our shore excursions or do Seville on your own, however you choose to do it. Then go back on board the ship, have an incredible meal, maybe a great glass of wine, even a nap, grab a sweater, go back out for the evening because you know that ship is not leaving till the following day. Again, it's giving you that time in port to fully connect with the destination. Here's another great example. This is one of the trips I absolutely love and it's definitely high on my list. This is Bordeaux in the France region, of course, as we know, and I love this particular trip because it starts in Southampton and ends in Bordeaux. Now, again, depending on the tides, we're either spending two days or even three days in the Bordeaux region afterwards, and then the ship will turn and she will continue on to her next segment. But I love this one because we have overnights in Enfleur. We go to Rouen, which is very, very close to Paris for two full days. We go into Nantes and into the Bordeaux region. Now, again, you'll see where the red has circled on my map. Again, the advantage of going by small ship. Most of the other ships park all the way up at the top by La Rochelle where the red circle is. We, on the other hand, sail all the way down into the Seine and we get very, very close to Paris. We're only about a two hour uh, train ride outside of the outskirts of Paris. Again, spending time there to really immerse yourself. So we're not a river cruise company, but a very special size of ship, which is able to do destination so fully by sailing up some of the world's rivers. Ah, St. Petersburg. Now I've just taken some examples of some of my favorite uh, trips that we do all around the world. And this is definitely one of them. We have two nights in St. Petersburg. We do an overnight in beautiful Amsterdam and two late nights in Helsinki, of course, the capital of Finland, and then into Berlin. Now, I love this one because we also visit Tallinn, Estonia, as you can see there, and just making our way through the beautiful part of this world. Now, when we, a lot of people have not seen the Kiel Canal, so that's a really unique thing to do as well. It really is reminiscent of sailing through fjords or a narrow river, which you would experience in uh, sort of Eastern Europe. The thing I love about this particular voyage is we block four blocks from the Hermitage, the State Museum. And of course, we do have time for you to take an excursion into the Hermitage and view all these beautiful antiquities and collections of collections, but it'll also give you time to go out. So say you want to go and see the, uh, the Fabergé Museum or something that is more unique to something that you want to see in this beautiful part of the world, you have that time because we are there for again, two full nights right in St. Petersburg. For us, it's about those cultural experiences that really do make the difference. So you can see here on my screen, just how close we really are when we're docked right at the city center. Again, most conventional bigger ships have to park a little ways out at the commercial dock. Ah, uh, the Japan intensive. If I was to think of two trips, 
and I know Lisa, you will you will agree with me on this one. Japan would definitely be one of them. I think Israel would be another, and maybe the Norway intensive. But this one, we are certainly capitalizing on the beautiful cherry blossom season. We have overnights in Tokyo and Kobe for you. And you can see that we pretty much circumnavigate the entire country of Japan. And we do Japan so incredibly well. Japan by land is very complicated. It gets very expensive. It gets very rushed. It's a hard thing to do. Japan is beautiful. It doesn't matter if you do it by land or by sea. But what I love by ocean is we go by through all of these incredible ports. And you're going from the area of the geisha to the you know incredible sumo to the samurai. Oh, to incredible monasteries that you will see, to the history that resonates into modern day Tokyo. It is absolutely an outstanding trip. And I love that we also go into Busan, into South Korea, so you can see the bustling, busy life there as well. Oops. I'm going to pop back to the Israel intensive. This one I love as well. Again, it's in October, and we've got additional voyages in 2022 because it's such a popular popular trip. I love this one because it starts in Athens and ends in Athens. It goes into Hatha, goes into Jerusalem, spending lots of time in port overnight. So you get that opportunity to really explore deep into this incredible part of the world. Egypt and Israel intensive. I love this one because it combines the best of two incredible countries. And we visit places like Istanbul as well, going into incredible Ephesus, uh, uh, of course, you can see on my thing on my map there, we go into Alexandria, Egypt, the big port city, one of the largest cities in all of Egypt. I think it sits as number three. And again, and starting in Athens, ending in Istanbul, you've got time to do a pre or a post. This is 12 nights, it's spring of 2022. So lots of time to plan. And I love this because people really want to sort of tick these destinations off of their so-called bucket list. And these are the trips that are really unique to Azamora. So these are ones we would not repeat. They would be 12 nights, 10 ports, four late nights, three overnights, and a really unique part of the world. Ah, the Greece intensive. And we'll revisit this one next week when we do our very, very special evening with Captain Philip, or afternoon, I should say. But Azamora and Greece have a very special relationship. Our former CEO of our company, he is now retired, really had a very strong passion for Greece. And he said, you know what? It's special ships like ours that can dive deep into these ports of call. Sure, all the big ships will go to places like Mykonos and Rhodes and Santorini, but we want to spend extra time, extra time in ports like Patmos and Spetses, really have our clients get the opportunity to taste the food, see the culture, interact with people, get to the outside villages, and really experience the true Greece. So we do a lot of Greece intensives, and I can tell you we do them incredibly well. This is just one night, one example of it. It's 10 nights. It's Return Athens. You can see all of the incredible ports of call that we go to on this Greece intensive. There's the uh, the invite, what it looks like on April 1st. Very, very happy to be having one of our captains join me. This is Captain Philip. He is currently the master of the Ozama request. He lives just outside of Athens. He will chime in and give us his whole rendition of how Greece uh, and what we do with Azamara is so special. And of course, when it's coming from someone who lives in Greece, it's that much more special. Another very unique opportunity to visit a country intensively is our Turkey intensive. Again, eight nights, seven ports, four late nights, and an overnight. Another very, very popular itinerary. October, so fall of 2022, a great time to go. Now, when we go into places like Kusadashi in Turkey, I love this. And you'll see it on the Greece intensive. You will see it on trips like this as well. There are actually 51 different itineraries that touch into various different places around Greece and Turkey that we have in the Osmar portfolio. I love this because this is really stepping back in time and we spend enough time there that you can really ensure you spend the entire day in this incredible part of the world. 
So you will see slides like this that I will present on our Greece intensive as well, but I wanted to pop this one up with Kusadashi because we visited so many times. These are highlights, of course, that you have opportunities to do. So you've got Ephesus, the terraced houses and the ruins of the Temple of Artemis, the Basilica of St. John, so important to the history of the biblical times, the House of the Virgin Mary, the very popular Pigeon Island and Ladies Beach. And where we dock in Kusadashi, we can walk into town and it's geared to tourists. So it's a very friendly, easy walk to get in there. It's only a 20 to 25 minute drive to Ephesus. We have, of course, shore excursions that will take you there. And the nice thing is that we sail at 10 p.m. So again, giving you that time to really immerse yourself in destination. This is one of the trips I absolutely love. And this is the Osmar Pursuit sailing to, of course, our Norway intensive. This takes place next June. I love this one because you yeah, embark the ship in Amsterdam and of course disembark in Copenhagen. Again, giving you lots of opportunity to pre or post there. But look at how we skirt and hug the coastline of Norway. Not only do we see the incredible cities that are so full of history, we're talking about the realm of the Vikings, of course, and the greatest explorers at that time, but also exploring some of the natural wonders of Norway, fjords and glaciers. The Trone Fjord is, or the Troll Fjord is one of the most beautiful fjords I've seen. Up in Tromsø, Norway, some of the most friendliest people I've ever met. Go up in, all the way up into the North Cape, right close to the Lapland border, and then coming all the way down, hugging that coastline like only Osamara can do. Now here is one that I love because again, Scotland you wouldn't typically think would be done by water. I love this particular one because it's Amsterdam to Dublin, it's 12 nights. And then we take the ship from Dublin and we turn it and we move her on to the next segment, giving you the opportunity where you can do them back to back. But again, it circumnavigates that whole upper part of Scotland, visiting great places like Oban, going into Norway, into the Kirkwall, into the Orkneys, into Aberdeen giving you that time in destination to really explore how you would like to see Scotland. Now, if you want to stay a little closer to home, you would just have to fly into Miami for Christmas or in December when we know the weather can once again turn. We're, of course, looking forward to summer and spring. But we have redeployed one of our ships to take advantage of the Caribbean. So we've got some amazing voyages that really explore the hidden gems of the Caribbean. And what I love about this, we go to those small little islands like you can see on my screen here, you will see tiny little ones like Labadee and Haiti, where we'll be the only ship there. And again, if you haven't done the Caribbean and you want to see some of the smaller places like Tortola or going into Antigua and to St. John's, doing it by small ship is a really great way to do that. These take place all next year, November or this year, November, December, uh, on the Azamara Quest. So a wonderful way to escape, escape the, uh, the Western Canadian winter and get into some of that Caribbean sun. So our destinations truly do come to life. Now with Osamara, virtually the, everything is included on board. The only thing is not is our shore excursions. But with our shore excursions, we very carefully curate them. So we give you choices. You can see the locales and landmarks, or you can do those on your own. You can do them by foot. You can do them by a hop on, hop off bus, or just sitting and enjoying a cup of coffee or tea or local speciality at a cafe or you can join one of ours that is called the Locals and Landmarks, where we'll touch all the must-see sites. Then we have local immersions. This is where we'll dive you deep. You will go into a private home and do a cooking class, some exclusive wine tasting. You will go to a local farm and see how they create something like buffalo mozzarella or going to the far out countryside to visit a chateau. Then we have exclusive experiences that are really special. These would be things like Makado safaris when we're in South Africa or visiting Victoria Falls by helicopter. So very, very unique destinations and how we bring them to life is very important to us at Azamara because they have to be authentic and they have to be something that our guests will take away as a memory that will last a lifetime. But really the choice is yours and we give you the time. We also have wonderful experiences for you to choose from on our ships, ones like this. So you saw I have the Scotland um, intensive up a few slides ago. 
we have time when we're there, we overnight conveniently in Edinburgh to make sure that we can take in the military tattoo. A lot of people will visit Scotland just for this particular event. And of course we do that with Azamora as well. We have things like the Monaco Grand Prix, the French Grand Prix, the Cannes Film Festival. We do things like the World Cup for Stalker. So these big world events will ensure that the ship is there overnight and we give you that opportunity to experience these world-class events firsthand. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the Netflix series called Drive to Survive where you get a chance to sort of look at the, at the drivers that drive all these Formula One cars. So for me to see this firsthand would be absolutely incredible. So if you haven't had a chance to check that out, it's really a fun series on Netflix. I think they're on to season three now. I'm a big fan, so I can't wait to go and see a Grand Prix first, uh, firsthand. And then we have wonderful partnerships with our fabulous partners like Perry Golf. This gives you an opportunity to golf the world with an incredible leader in golf voyages. Now we have quite a lineup for 22 and 23. We have 13 different voyages lined up that all have golf in them. And we can golf the entire world with Perry. They take care of absolutely everything for you. And it's like a floating clubhouse with a group of golfers on board. So it's something that's very, very special. It's a very strong partnership. And we have opportunities to do things even like the British Isles Golf Cruise where it's 12 nights, you get seven rounds. You can see all of the different courses up there. It's Edinburgh to Southampton beautiful, beautiful partnership. There is a uh, an opportunity to see one of our ships and a screenshot from Perry Golf just showing you where we actually uh, can go with them. So let me talk a little bit about our amazing fleet. Our fleet is sophisticated, it's intimate ambiance, but that special small ship feel that gets you into destination like it's your own private ship or a gorgeous floating boutique hotel at sea. Currently, we have three identical sisters, and we have a fourth one joining our fleet, as I mentioned before. We have the Ozomar Quest, the Ozomar Journey, and the Ozomar Pursuit. They all hold just 700 passengers and 408 incredible crew. You've heard me say it's like a boutique hotel at sea because this is what welcomes you when you step on board. These are beautiful Renaissance ships that have all been reimagined top to bottom. And what I love when they reimagined them, they still kept the simplicity and the elegance of the ships from that era. So these ornate staircases that adorn every one of our ships, the gorgeous stained glass in the library, but yes, but yet fine touches all throughout. So you'll see gorgeous Italian letters, leather throughout, and also a, a little bit of a Scandinavian flair, which I absolutely love because what we wanna do is make it like a home away from home. So when you come back on board, you feel a chance just to relax. The den is where the formal casinos used to be on these Renaissance ships. And this is a hub where people gather after a busy day. You grab a great drink or a martini from the bar there, beautiful grand piano uh, playing some um, wonderful music for you. And it's a chance to interact with like-minded individuals. The den is just one of several places on the ship that our clients love to come and just reflect on their busy day. This is where they'll have enrichment lectures as well. Once in a while, they'll have a special guest that'll come from on shore to talk about perhaps um, something that's unique in the next destination. It could be a wine tasting, or it could be a historian or a glaciologist or a marine biologist, or it could just simply be somebody who's gonna be talking about the local culture and dance from the destination. Again, the den is a great hub, it's interactive, a great place to um, just interact with your fellow travelers. I love the Mosaic Cafe. This is a beautiful little cafe and it's there for you for your specialty coffees. You can have high tea here in the afternoon. I always pass by there. They have wonderful little finger sandwiches and quiches. You can take some of those to go or back to your room or just sit and play cards or read a book. It's a great place just to relax in the morning. And what I love about the bistro here is that you know the barista knows that I like a cappuccino dry and he'll have that figured out by day number two and have that cup waiting for me every morning at 7.01. The living room. This is at the back of the ship on deck 10 and I love this part of the ship. It is a place where if you're not gathering in the den, this is the sure place to go to. 
They have a great dance floor. They usually have a live band or a DJ playing. We have tapas that are sampled from the local ports that we visit, complimentary that, uh, that are there starting around four o'clock in the afternoon. A fantastic bar. So all of our standard spirits, beers and wines are all complimentary. Again, grab a gin and tonic or your favorite glass of sparkling wine. And you can sit and just watch the open vistas as we sail by. There's wonderful, comfortable chairs there. It's just fantastic music. And this is also where we do our wine pairing and chef's table as well. The rooms on board our ship are wonderful. They are spacious, they're elegantly designed. The sheets are buttery soft. The beds are so hard to get out of in the morning. And there's plenty of creative space to ensure that you're comfortable in your room. This is an example of a club veranda. This is typically what most clients will book on board our ships. And you can see they are very well appointed. Now we also have Club Continent Suites. We have Club World Owners. We have Spa Suites that go bigger and bigger up the line. And then we also have Ocean View and Inside Cabins as well. My favorite is the one that's on right now, which is the Club Continent. This one comes with a full butler and all the bells and whistles you can imagine a beautiful deck outside. It comes with a complimentary bar and not that you really need it because in Azamara, our standard spirits, beers and wines are all included, but beautiful, spacious bathroom, gorgeous king size bed. I can tell you it's a very wonderful way to come home to every night to relax, to reflect, get your energy, refresh and make your way to one of the dining rooms or back out to the port call for the day. We also do some really fun things with Azamara, things like what we call our evening under the stars or our formal white night parties. These are unbelievable. They are so, so fun and a true highlight for a lot of our guests. Everybody dresses in white. It's typically when our ship is parked in port for an overnight. Here you can see it, it's in Monte Carlo. Our chefs showcase what they do the absolute best. Lots of fantastic food, the sparkling wine all pours. We have some amazing music that's put on by our team. And then quite often we'll bring some local music as well. And it's just a great opportunity to throw a fantastic party. Now, I'm going to tell you a little story of when I took my family. It was my mother-in-law and my 19-year-old uh, daughter. And my husband and I traveled to Croatia last year. And our evening under the stars, known as the White Night Party, was in Kutor in Montenegro. And we had parked there and had spent the day exploring. It was a fantastic day. We came back to the ship, the sun set, the ship all lit up. And one of the things that I absolutely love is where the ship was parked, we were right at the base of a mountain. And on that mountain were some gorgeous, it was a gorgeous monastery. And as the lights went out, or the uh, lights of the monastery, the staircase all started to light up. As the sun went down, we could hear the monks sing. It was so magical. And then, of course, there we were on our ship. We all did a toast and enjoyed the evening. So those are those moments that really do make an impression and last a lifetime. We also have us amazing evenings. And these are cultural bespoke events that take place in a destination complimentary to all of you when we're there to really ensure that you are connecting with wherever we're at. Now, we are currently revising these because of our COVID environment. But hopefully we'll be able to stay true to the DNA in which we have with our Oz Amazing Evening. So they truly are special. It's a bespoke event that will bring together the best of the destination. So an example in Dubrovnik, it'll be a world-renowned cellist who performs on the steps of the old church. In Laverno, it's these three incredible tenors that you see on my screen. In St. Petersburg, it'll be the Bolshoi's and the symphony orchestra along with the boys choir singing to our entire ship. Again, it's a night event, complimentary, takes place on any one of our voyages that is seven nights or longer. So what's included with Azamara? We're a cruise line that has wonderful value. 
pretty much everything on board is included for you. The only thing that is not is our shore excursions. And of course, the team can look after the logistics of flights and things like that to get you to and from. That's, of course, Randy and Scarlett and everyone on, on the screen there. But all inclusive amenities you can see for all of our guests are there. And then we have additional ones when you book suites. Of course, you get butler service and all kinds of extra things where they do your laundry for you. But we have self-serve laundry. All of the gratuities are included. All of the, what I was mentioning before, especially coffees, teas, bottled water, self-serve laundry. I love we have shuttle service to and from ports where that's available. So you don't have to schlep for, you know, several hundred meters or fly down a car. We've got a shuttle that'll take you there. Concierge service. This is a local tourist board or somebody from the city that will come and have maps and walking uh, routes for you and shopping. So if you just want to do it on your own, that's available as well. So you can see with Ozamara, it is incredible value. Now, I love our heart and our soul is our crew that you see here. They truly are an amazing group of people. The thing that I love about our team on board is they really do welcome you home at the end of the day and they go out of their way to ensure that's how you feel. It's a very special ambiance on board our ships. It's not stuffy. It's not pretentious. It's not scheduled. And what I love is it's gracious hospitality. So they leave you alone enough to enjoy yourself, but at the same time, we'll do those small little things to ensure that you feel like you're on a very truly special cruise. So of course, those are all our captains up at the top, our incredible hotel uh, directors in the middle, and our amazing entertainment crew down below. You won't find the Blue Man Group on board Azamara, but you'll find some great jazz, some enriching cultural lectures, and you'll find some wonderful shows that are put on by that team on that lower screen there. Now we have a wonderful Expedia partnership. The folks that are hosting you this evening are such good friends of ours and wonderful partners to us at Expedia. So right up until the end of March, we have a three, four, five hundred dollar onboard credit offering for you. So once March 31st ends, April 1st starts, we have a different market offer, but I wanna focus on this one right now because it's pretty darn special. So let's say you wanted to do that 15 night Japan intensive that I had about seven slides back. And you wanna book a continental suite, my favorite. You would get that at 40% off. You would also get free Wi-Fi, And because it's part of this deal right now, you would get a thousand dollars on board credit. And that's on top of all of those Osmara inclusive amenities. So that thousand dollars can go to some special spa pampering. It can go to some of the incredible shore excursions. You can spend it on board the ship in the gift shop if you would like. So really, really special offering for you right now. Now this is truly amazing because right now we also have free Wi-Fi on those voyages as well. So you've got a lot of extra perks and a lot of extra layering. And I can tell you the one thing with Azamara is our food is incredible. We have two specialty restaurants. We have Prime C and we have Aqualina. Prime C is our steakhouse and Aqualina is our specialty Italian. Now, typically, if you're not in a suite, that would be a $30 surcharge. But with onboard credits like this, you can dine in those specialty restaurants as many times as you would like. And those of you who are single or solo, don't bypass a cruise line like Ozamara. We love having our single solo travelers with us. And we are very aware that that single supplement can be a little bit of a sore spot. So we ensure that we keep that single supplement low enough that for those of you who do want to travel on your own, we do make it affordable. Again, everybody who's invited you here this evening can give you all the voyages that have that solo supplement on that. So just as I wrap up here, and again, I apologize for the little technical glitches at the beginning, but why Azamara? It's all about those longer stays. There's more overnights, the night touring. It really makes something that's true and different to us. And that's that destination immersion. We wanna sure you have time in port. We wanna feel, make sure that you feel like it's unrushed and unstructured. And we wanna make sure it's your cruise, how you envision it. So if it's culture, if it's history, if it's just taking in the sites or ticking off a bucket, it's all about why you want to go to that particular destination. 
So with that, I'm going to stop sharing, say thank you. I'm going to take a quick sip of my wine to soothe my throat. So cheers to all of you. And I'll pop back on the team here. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Thank you so much, Eva. I, I have been fortunate enough to sail Azamara twice and everything you said was so true. And my <laughs> as amazing evening in St. Petersburg was the wonderful concert and just oh. brings tears to my eyes when I remember it. Um, just one thing I wanted to let, let you know that your last slide said $3,000 support credit for an ocean view. I think you meant 300. Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so let's just go to a couple questions here. Um, one of the questions that we do have is, what is the average age for an Azamara cruise passenger? Oh, good, good, good question. You know, we get this one a lot. Now, it really depends on where we go. So I'm going to use Antarctica and sort of South America as an example. That is going to attract a little bit of younger clientele just because it's it's a destination that um, people will want to stay active in. So our typical sort of magic number that are, is kind of we hone in on as the average age is 55. But let's give or take 20 years on either end because on something like a South America trip, you're gonna have anybody from 35 to 55 to 65. And then if you're doing some of the other trips, you can have folks that are um, a little bit older in there because perhaps they've been to a destination that's more active when they were a little younger. And now they wanna go to a destination uh, that maybe is on their bucket list, like uh, for example, Turkey or Istanbul, those kinds of area will attract a little bit older of a clientele. Okay, 55 perfect. is our magic. 10 or 20 years on either end. Uh, Eva, can you clarify, because you had said that internet was included, I think that is just a limited time special, is that not? Correct, yes, it is right till the end of the month. It is included on our current wave and flash sale offer. Now with Expedia Cruise Ship Centers, or Expedia Cruises as I should say, um, we have that very special onboard credit for you for the next two weeks, starting April 1st, because right now we have it right till the end of the month. And then I have one that's very special for the six centers. So that'll go right to April 16th. That will easily take care of your Wi-Fi. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, question from Greg. What happened to the crew during the pandemic? There have oh, been some horror question. stories of crews stranded on ships. Can you oh. share with us a little bit? I can. You know, that was a colossal feat to, to get crew home. You can imagine all of the ships that had thousands and thousands of crew stuck all over the world. Now, at the time we were part of the Royal Caribbean groups, we were very lucky that we could sort of pool our efforts together to ensure that when we were taking some of our crew home to the Philippines, we could charter a larger ship or even or charter a larger plane or even take a ship one of ours in our existing fleet and sail it into port. For the most part, it did take a lot of logistics and a few weeks to get everybody home. And in some cases we couldn't, some borders closed too quick. So you know what, we housed them on board the ships and we were able to keep them safe. We were able to keep them healthy until we could get them home at a time that was right for their individual countries. So currently we do have a full crew sitting on board the ships in Glasgow, in Scotland, and we're rotating those crew. They go home, they do their correct protocols, all their testing, negative COVID tests or vaccines. They come back board and they are doing um, all, of the, all of the refurbishments and upgrades that are required before, of course, we can get back onto that water. So okay. it was a bit of a story. Oh, you, got, you guys did a great job on that. What is the smoking policy on board the ship? Oh, good, good question as well. So our ships, anywhere in the public areas, there's no smoking. So no smoking in your cabins. You can't smoke on your verandas or your balconies. On our each one of our ships, there is a designated smoking area. Um, and it's there, it's for the smokers. It's in an area that is quite confined. And it's an area that is there for those of you who do enjoy um, smoking, but it is limited to one very special small area on the ship only. So you can't smoke on the outer decks, can't smoke in your balconies, can't smoke in your rooms, anything like that. Thank you. Current refund policy. 
Oh, the, <laughs> that's always a good one, isn't it? I couldn't read. I have to say, you know, when and Lisa, you can you can talk about this. So can anybody else on board or on on the um, on the webinar tonight? It's something I'm really proud of to work in the cruise industry. We have done an incredible job with refunds. We really, really have. So when you bump us up with other um, sort of sectors in the tourism industry, we have done an incredible job because we wanna protect you as our cruiser and we want you to come back on board. So with our cruise with confidence, you can change your mind. You can have a refund. If we cancel the trip, we give you a future cruise credit. You can do all different ways to slice and dice it. Doesn't matter what you choose to do. The team there knows it very, very well. We take a look at what you have. If you want to cancel, that's fine. It depends where you fall into penalty. Um, quite often we'll ensure that you get your full refund back. If you've got a future cruise credit, we take that as a separate case. Okay, perfect. And yes, definitely lots of flexibility in terms of yeah. booking now and making sure your investment is safe. Um, question, do, are all these ships now without casinos? I know the Pursuit was built without it. Uh, right. What about the other three ships? Do they have casinos? So the Pursuit does not have a casino. That's got our gorgeous den, it's the picture I showed you. The Awesome Art Quest does not have a casino. That has the gorgeous den, which I showed you. The Awesome Art Journey, which is the third sister ship, was supposed to go to into dry dock last October to get her casino removed. You know, COVID hit, so unfortunately, our ship was not in a place to go into dry dock and Gdansk to get her casino removed. She's in Glasgow now, and currently the team is working on that. Our fourth ship, which we are now, we have just graced her the name, the Ozamara Onward. She is currently going to join her three sisters, and we haven't been really given an inside look at what she's got, but she will look identical to the other three. So she will have her casino removed if she's got it in there. And I remember hearing Larry Pimentel talking about casino. And for those of you who love to gamble, I understand. But there's so much late night. There's so many things to do on the ship that they felt that the casino really was some wasted space. And it would be much better to have a lounge area. Uh, yeah, so well, such great use space. You're so right. Because the, uh, the casinos can't be open when we're in port. Correct. And we're 80% uh, of the time in port. <laughs> exactly. All right. A uh, question a couple years ago, this is from Jan. A couple years ago, you had a trip from Singapore through Indonesia to Perth and then into Sydney on New Year's Eve. Will this be, uh, will this itinerary be planned again? Oh, Jan, you know what? That is such a popular trip. You're not the only one that's, I just did a webinar a couple of days ago and someone asked about the same itinerary. Anything that goes from Singapore downwards, like to Cape Town or anything like that is a very, very popular part of the world. And I agree with you. It was something that I didn't go on it personally, but I heard so many great stories of, of our clients that absolutely loved it. I have a sneaking suspicion that look in our 2023 deployment when it's released, that'll be coming out shortly. There'll be some voyages that are very, very similar to that particular one, just because again, it is so popular. And we find places like Turkey and Egypt and that part of the world are becoming more and more on people's radar, right? So look for other voyages like that. But one thing Asamara does not do is repeat and repeat and repeat. We go something unique every time. Thank you. A uh, question do, about to COVID. Will Azamara have the ability for rapid testing prior to departure or at the end of a cruise? Oh, good question, right? I wish I could shake a crystal ball. Right now, we are um, very closely monitoring, of course, what the CDC protocols are. Uh, rest assured, you can sort of breathe easy to know that we will follow protocol as it's laid out for us. Everything is being worked behind the scenes to ensure that whatever the CDC puts in place, we will have to follow and exceed it. So, you know, good news, you know, our, the Royal Caribbean family of brands has got some cruises that are gonna be happening in the Caribbean. Uh, we've got some other good news stories about ships going out. So with their current protocols of a negative COVID test or a vaccine, um, you know, the rest of us will sure to follow, but right now we don't have those type of, that type of information to release. Stay tuned on it. It will come as 
the entire industry takes that big leap forward. Okay, perfect. Uh, could you clarify what standard spirits included means? What are your standard spirits? I standard spirits, I sure can. So standard spirits, beers and wines are all included. I can tell you, and Lisa, you can attest to this because you love wine as much as I do. Our wines on board are fabulous. They are so good. And it's not just one wine you know, glass at lunch or dinner. You have a selection of wines. You'll usually have typically two or three reds, two, three whites, usually a sparkling and a rosé. And what I love about our ship, and I'll address all the way through here, but what I love about our company is, let's say you really enjoyed uh, the sparkling Prosecco they had at lunch and you want to have a dinner, the team will go get that bottle for you and serve it to you at your dinner table that night in Discoveries. Now, our standard spirits, if you like Grey Goose in your martini, that would be part of an upgrade. Now, the nice thing about Azamara is both of you don't have to purchase an upgrade package. You can just do it one drink at a time. Only you can do it, and it's about $19.95 per day, and that would include the higher end spirits. So the Grey Gooses, that would include some of your finer rums, your finer tequilas, um, you know, the bourbons, things like that. The beers are, you know, sort of the European brands of the Heineken's, those kinds of things. Um, so those would be standard. That's what would be included. But if you go to the bar and you ask for a gin and tonic, you'll get a great gin and tonic. But if you want Hendrix, it's an upgrade. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. Tell us a little bit, I'm a little curious, uh, because I know that Azamara was part of the Royal Caribbean family. So yes. what does the sale to, um, uh, is it Sycamore? It's Sycamore the Partners. Sycamore Investments. What does the sale mean to Azamara as a company? How will that benefit you as a cruise line? Oh, you know what? It's a common question that we've had because nobody knows who Sycamore Partners are really. And I'm looking up, Lisa, because you're on my screen up here. Um, Sycamore Partner is, yeah, I kind of did some digging around. So we weren't for sale, but they identified a couple of cruise lines that have incredible, incredible um, prospect to really glow, grow and flourish. And Osmore is one of those cruise lines that was really just growing and growing steadily with our repeat clientele an incredible guest satisfaction scores. So they honed in on us on being something that was very, very special. So Sycamore Partners is a holding or an investment firm based out of New York. They own companies like Staples, Stuart Wiseman. Um, they own a couple other very well-known clothing brands, uh, Talbots, for example. So those are some common companies that we would know. They have numerous other ones, but they are an investment firm. So they have no interest in running us as a company or telling us how to change who we are because our DNA is in our destination immersion and what we do. So what allows what they sort of taking us over as a holding firm allows us to do is flourish and grow. And they made us that promise when they when they first purchased us. And then a week later, they bought us a new ship. So it wasn't just the talk. It really was the walk. They wanted to ensure that they fulfilled that commitment. So what it's going to allow us to be is the best Osamara that we possibly can. It's investing in us, investing in our hardware, investing in our team, and investing in our talent. So yeah. that's what it's going to do for us. On Perfect. the front and, side, you will notice no difference. And I'm excited because you mentioned earlier that itineraries aren't uh, repeated. And what I have noticed is that certain destinations, because you only have three ships, can't be reached every year and now with a force ship, which brings me to another question uh, that yeah. was asked about why is it taking until 2022 for the fourth ship to uh, come into service? Is it being renovated, refurbished, <laughs> as Amara eyes? <laughs> oh, the above. Yes, it's very important that ships are, we want to make sure that we don't have different classes. We want to make sure that one ship doesn't look so much different than the other. We want to be that small brand, right? A boutique brand that, yes, the teams on board will deliver something that's really unique and special, but the ship should all be pretty much exactly the same. So our newest ship, we brought her into our fleet and really uh, you can imagine the poor product teams in the cruise industry as a whole. 
they pencil in something to redeploy the ships. And then three months later, they got to change it again because the CDC has not lifted protocols. The prime example is Alaska. You can imagine all the ships that were supposed to be there. What are you going to do with them all now? You have to redeploy them. So with us, when you, we add a new ship to our fleet, we really carefully have to think about where the ship is going to go. Because it's not like we can just say, hey, we're going to go to Seville. It takes a lot of red tape to get our ship in there. It takes a lot of stamps of approval to ensure that we can get into destination. And we have to do it our way. We can't just sail in at nine and leave at three. That's not Azamara. We gotta leave, we gotta sail in at 6 a.m. and not leave till 10 p.m. How do we make that happen? So we'd rather do it right and not rush it rather than to rush it and do it wrong. Okay, thank you. Uh, a question about air quality uh, yes. during the pandemic. What has Azamara done to make sure additional steps have been taken to ensure good air quality? Uh, you know what? The ships are probably the safest place that you can be because our air quality is incredible on board. They have updated all of the systems to meet the highest standards of air. Where the air on board the ships is recirculated uh, no longer. It's pumped out and new air is brought back in. And it's something like every 0.6 seconds or something, we've got the filters going through and brand new air is bought on board the ship. You know, I love what Richard Fain used to say that you were safer on board a ship than you were going to your local grocery store because the air quality is phenomenal on board and the sanitization that takes place is incredible. I can tell you with our brand, like with Azamara, we didn't have any COVID cases whatsoever on board our ships. Now call it luck or call it what we do for the extent of being very detailed in our sanitation process. And now we're just gonna escalate it even more. Excellent. All right, we have another question. Um, how easy is it to find space on deck or in the piano bar? And I, oh. I can attest to that there is no problems yeah, at all on that. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Yeah, I absolutely. Never, never had a problem. Didn't have to get up early in the morning to put a towel down on a deck chair. There is lots and lots of space. Right, um, exactly. Yeah. Another question about tender stops. Are there tender stops or do you manage to find docks in all the ports of call? Oh, I wish we could dock in all the ports of call, but you know, places like Dubrovnik, there is no way you can get a ship in the port of Dubrovnik. I, I mean, it's gonna only house a, you know, a hundred foot boat, that's it. So places like that, we will anchor as close as we possibly can. Places like Monte Carlo, it's fantastic. We can pull right up, right alongside those big yachts, which is great. So we tender when we can't get in and we port when we absolutely can. The nice thing about our ships is we can get in there pretty often versus our big ships, which just can't. Places like in Greece and Spetses and Patmos, there's no way we can pull into those little ports. You have to anchor, you, you have to anchor. But it's nice because the shuttles run continually. There is, um, it's a very, very quick process. They're going all the time. So it's not just stagnated. You know, as soon as there's a couple of people awaiting, one of the tenders will be called up and loaded and off she goes. And we don't wait till the tender is full. We'll make sure it's continually running. Okay, perfect. So it's a pretty easy, quick process. Absolutely. Uh, question, now that you're not part of the Royal Caribbean brand, how has the loyalty program changed? Oh, it hasn't for right now. Sorry? Um, it has not. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw, I saw a message come in on my phone as well. It has not. So the loyalty program, which is called Le Club Voyage or the Osmoro Circle now, will not change for the foreseeable future. It will stay as a reciprocity between our sister brands because we know that's very, very important to our guests. So that won't change until 2022. Um, then we will continue with our loyalty and back to back for our loyal Osmoro guests. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Another question, can you expand on shore excursions? Are any included? If, if not, how expensive are they? Are there lots of options? Oh, good, good question too. So we do include one hunker of one and that's the awesome, amazing evening. So that is considered a shore excursion or a night touring event. 
we would include that on any voyage that's seven nights or longer, completely complimentary. Our shore excursions are not included. That's how we're able to keep our price pointing very, very low. And we also know that one size doesn't fit all when it comes to our clients. So we make our shore excursions, they can be as fancy as an overnight experience in a four season style tent in the high Chilean desert, which would cost a couple hundred dollars. Uh, to a Mikado pre-post safari, which is also considered a shore excursion, which would be a couple of thousand dollars, to something as very simple as a city tour, which would be $60. So the price can go anywhere from very low to very high. Most of the time, people will take a shore excursion that's four to six hours long. It'll be anywhere from you know, 80 to $200, depends if there's a meal included, or something that's a unique experience. Uh, but for the most part, we try to keep them as reasonable as we possibly can. Really, okay. the choice is yours. There's a lot. All right. Yeah. Uh, quick one. What's the tonnage of the ship? Oh, each one of them. They, <laughs> they are, um, you know, and I was just going to keep glancing down here. They're like 60 point something gross tonnage. And they have... Uh, 680 passengers, 408 crew. Um, it's one of those, one of those, uh, all three of them are exactly, all four of them are exactly the same. I was just looking down to get it. I had that question the other day, but it slipped my mind. 592 feet or each ship, 30.277 tons. Perfect. Thank you. 30,278 tons. There you go. To be precise. <laughs> when you have to tender, how time consuming is the tender process? Uh, it's very, it's very, very efficient and it runs really, really well. I have to say, I've been really like I've sailed on several cruise lines and I'm really, I say this from my heart, ours works so, so well. Because again, we're constantly running the tenders. They don't go on a schedule. So when there's people on the dock, they call a tender, they fill it and off it goes. Um, so it's not tedious. And the nice thing too, and Lisa, you can attest to this, you've been on a couple of Osmar cruises. You don't really stand in line. You literally have to wait a couple minutes as you go through the, you know, the, the security. So they scan your card and they, you put your little purse or bag through the x-ray machine. Um, but it's not a stand in line, tedious 45 minute wait. It's minutes. It yeah, literally there are is. no lineups anywhere, anytime. Um, one last question. And Neither if anybody still email. has questions, if you can email your consultants, because uh, we don't want to keep you too much longer. One last question. Uh, medical support, medical facilities on the ship? Mm -hmm. We have a yes. full hospital on board the ship with a doctor and nurses. Um, with the current CDC protocols on board, we will have to have some specialists on board as well. Again, with our current environment, that is continually changing. But we have an amazing clinic on board that's fully medically staffed with a doctor and nurses. Perfect, perfect. All right, well, thank you. Thank you for answering all those questions. Um, although travel is currently paused, the world is going to start traveling again. And now it is the time to start thinking. We are seeing a huge, huge increase in bookings for 2022, 2023. So I thank you all for joining us. Um, there is a link in the chat. Again, don't forget Captain Philippe, Thursday, April 1st at 1 p.m. I want to thank you for joining us. I want to, uh, we appreciate your time, your past travels with us. We do these talks every Thursday. Next week is going to be Uniworld Boutique River Cruises and Insight Vacations. Remember to follow us on Facebook, check, check out our YouTube channel. We also record all our videos and presentations on YouTube. And we look forward to hearing from you and seeing you again. If you do still have any questions, you can email your consultants. I thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Eva, for bringing back wonderful memories for me and inspiring all of us. And please continue to join us. Stay safe, stay healthy, and hopefully we'll continue to see you on Thursday night at our travel talks. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Stay safe. Happy travels. See you soon.